I wish to commend the efforts of the Kaduna State Government to establish its credentials as one of the new investment destinations of choice in Nigeria. We will support genuine efforts at attracting job creating investment at all levels, President Buhari declares as he addresses Kaduna Investment Forum. I think that it is possible we have quite a few initiatives for small businesses. And I think that these kinds of uh, uh, media platforms are also small businesses and they can benefit. Vice President Oshimbajo engages APC social media groups, pledges more youth-friendly policies. You cannot get serviceable platform if you don't have technicians that are properly trained. Executive Order 5, Nigerian Air Force achieves more than 85% serviceability on operational platforms. Also tonight, farmers in good deal as Nassau partners Regic to develop hybrid multiparial crop indemnity index insurance. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. We are live in Abuja. I am Kenan Ima Abodike. We will have Michael Olale reading from Lagos while Chinenye Nguye is in Enugu. President Muhammad Buhari says the federal government will continue to support genuine efforts at attracting job creating investment, especially at the sub national level, which he believes can do much more towards driving human capital development and expanding economic opportunities. This was in his virtual address to the 5th Kaduna State Economic and Investment Summit, which begins today in Kaduna. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has the details. Best 5.0, as the two-day event is called, focuses on infrastructure, industrialization, and innovation. President Muhammad Buhari described as a fitting statement of resilience that Kaduna State Government is able to host this year's edition amidst the severe disruptions to normal order caused by COVID-19. This sort of determined focus, he said, can help the country to navigate the challenging consequences of the pandemic. I wish to commend the efforts of the Kaduna State Government to establish its credentials as one of the new investment destinations of choice in Nigeria. These efforts have received just recognition in the response of the business community which has put in new investments in the state. This is a further affirmation of the ranking of the state as number one for ease of doing business by the World Bank's Doing Business Report 2018. I call on the Kaduna State Government to keep up these laudable efforts and surpass the impressive results already attained. Noting with delight the massive investments in infrastructure upgrade being executed by the El Rufai administration through the urban renewal programs, the president expressed the belief that the success of state governments in attracting investments, creating jobs, and increasing their internally generated revenues is critical to the success of the entire country. I have no doubt that Kaduna State Government and its private sector partners will take full advantage of the economic windows that are being opened by federal government investment such as Ajakuta, Kaduna, Kano, Gas Five Line. The state government should afford full cooperation and support to cross-border federal projects such as Ajakuta, Kaduna, Kano, pipeline and the Abuja, Kaduna, Zaria, Kano Highway. President Buhari used the opportunity to appeal to the people of Kaduna to cooperate with the state government and security agencies towards securing peace and harmony in the state, saying without living together as brothers and sisters in peace, development cannot take place. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari Sunday evening granted audience to his Ghanaian counterpart Nana Akufo-Addo. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo again reports that President Akufo-Addo, who was recently elected chairman of ECOWAS, came to Nigeria on a familiarization visit to the headquarters of the sub-regional organization in Abuja. President Bukhari and the Ghanaian leader held talks behind closed doors that lasted about one hour and the details of their discussions were not made public. President Nanan Akufo Adol could not say much when confronted by NTA News. You know, I've just been recently elected chairman of the, of the community, so I'm coming to see the uh, people at the headquarters. But I felt I should come and visit President uh, Buhari for us to talk about matters of mutual concern. So it's a, a, an informal visit, and he was good enough to invite me to dinner. So those matters of mutual concern. We'll be talking. <laughs> <laughs> The Ghanaian leader who is seeking for a second term in office was elected chairman of ECOWAS at the 57th Extraordinary Summit of the Heads of State and Government held in the Niger Republic on the 7th of this month. Now, programs and activities within the framework of the ECOWAS Vision 2050 being finalized will now be adjusted to accommodate changes brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic to enable member countries cope more effectively with future shocks. The chairperson of ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government and President of Ghana, Nana Addo Akufuado, who visited the ECOWAS Commission in Abuja, says this is now a priority. This is the first visit to the ECOWAS Commission headquarters in Abuja since its election in September 7th in Niamey, in Nigeria Republic, as chair of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government. President Nana Addo Akufuado wants to see the level of implementation of various ECOWAS programs and projects, evaluate them along with the heads of ECOWAS institutions to give impetus to his own agenda anchored on issues like tackling rising terrorism in the region, strengthening response to COVID-19, free trade and consolidation of democracy. I congratulate His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the ECOWAS champion on the fight against COVID-19, for the successes recorded under his supervision. ECOWAS should take a lead role in the deliberations to produce an indigenous or African vaccine to combat the virus. The president of ECOWAS Commission, Jean-Claude Cassibrau, was optimistic that despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, the various institutions of the commission won't lose too much grounds in realizing their mandates. Please be assured that the of institution on the staff are available to work with you to address the challenges ahead. We are at the disposal to make sure the success of the agency President Nana Addo Akufo Addo will lead the regional body for the next one year during which issues of greater economic integration and monetary union are expected to feature prominently in its engagements. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari says if the global community is to achieve the United Nations it needs and build a desired future for all, the Security Council must be reformed and global approach adopted in all negative developments, especially the COVID-19 pandemic. The President said this while addressing the high-level virtual meeting to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. State House correspondent Adam Usambo once again reports. Today's celebration is a remarkable milestone in the history of the United Nations. For seven and a half decades, President Muhammad Buhari said the United Nations has remained true to the aspirations of its founding fathers, growing in membership and scope to reflect contemporary global trends as well as playing a crucial role in fostering peace and security. Lives have been saved and improved, rights of the vulnerable defended, while collective actions taken to invest in conflict resolution and peacekeeping, shelter refugees, and foster development. As an active member of the organization, Nigeria has contributed human, financial, and material resources to several United Nations peacekeeping operations. We have also provided humanitarian aid to refugees 
and displaced persons helped countries in tackling diseases such as Ebola and extended both human and financial resources as technical aid to other countries. In addition, we have served on five occasions as non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and contributed significantly to the promotion of international peace and security. President Buhari is however worried that in spite of the progress made, the world is still faced with complex challenges and efforts towards addressing impediments for the attainment of Agenda 2030 for sustainable development were undermined by the COVID-19 pandemic. The inward looking tendencies exhibited by member states in the wake of the pandemic have particularly revealed an urgent need for us to strengthen international cooperation, unity and solidarity to address all negative developments and search for possible solutions, including an effective vaccine. We implore nations to adopt a global approach in addressing the global health emergency in a bid to build the future we want. The Nigerian leader also emphasized the imperative of a fair and equitable representation in the Security Council towards achieving the desired United Nations. The demand for the reform of the United Nations Security Council is just and a place for Africa in the very strategic organ of the organization is long overdue. It is my hope that this anniversary will encourage as to respond to numerous challenges we face and support efforts aimed at building the United Nations system we desire. While reiterating Nigeria's commitment to multilateralism and a rules-based international system, President Buhari said his country will sustain efforts at upholding the principles of human rights peace and security, as well as democratic governance towards rebuilding the United Nations of everyone's dream. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The United Nations has reiterated commitment to work with Borono state government to address the security challenges confronting the state. UN resident humanitarian coordinator Edward Calon stated this when he led a delegation on a courtesy visit to Governor Babaganan Omar Azulum at the government house, Meduguri. Mohamed Goni reports. United Nations Resident Humanitarian Coordinator Mr. Edward Carlon had during the visit dwell on a number of issues bordering on efforts at managing COVID-19. The ongoing insurgency in the Northeast with its resultant effect on the population as well as food insecurity confronting the people of the Northeast. Permit me, Your Excellency, to commend you and your colleagues in Adama and Yobe states for your leadership and collaboration in the implementation of the Joint Action Plan of the Regional Stabilization Facility for the Richard Basin. The UN Humanitarian Coordinator commended Borno State Government for developing a 25-year development framework and 10-year strategic transformation plan, which he said is a demonstration of commitment to restore the state's lost glory. The UN Resident Coordinator then offered recommendations on managing COVID-19 pandemic and ending the lingering security challenges. Governor Bagana Omar, who appreciated the UN family for the support to the IDPs in camps and host communities, further called for a shift from short-term intervention to a long-term durable solution to the crisis. This administration under my leadership is determined to support all the humanitarian workers in Borno State. The governor stressed the need to resettle IDPs in their original communities to start farming activities, saying reliance on food aid is not a solution and the father call on all to partner with the UN Stabilization Window Facility. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Now, the need to fast-track the ratification process for the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement signed by Nigerian government on the 7th of July 2019 has again come to the fore. This formed part of discussions during a three-day official visit of the Secretary-General, AFCFTA, Secretariat, Wamkele Mene to Nigeria. Chima Obi-Walter Naji tells us more. 
The problems of transshipment of products through the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, creating jobs through value chain development in manufacturing, and fast-tracking conflict resolution around the region are areas of interest for the Secretariat in its bid to ensure the success of the Intra-African Trade Agreement to effectively increase the 1.5% trade among African countries to over 50%. We are at a point where we will soon uh, take a member to the Federal Executive Council for approval for ratification and we're very hopeful that we'll get it voted out much, much sooner yes. before uh, the official date of the takeoff of the uh, agreement. I have already started engaging with um, uh, three of the, the world's top automobile makers who very much are, are looking forward to when we will conclude the rules of origin uh, negotiations so that they, they can consider uh, to move the production of their components from South Asia to Africa. Earlier, while visiting the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiation, the issues relating to keying into the fourth industrial revolution, the Internet of Things, trade remedies, and fostering mutual peppers in its success topped the agenda. But we also must be careful to ensure that there is inclusivity, as I mentioned earlier, that people are not left behind, particularly MSMEs, informal traders who trade, this is informal trade across, uh, across the borders. You know, we must make sure that we have, give them access to credit and we, we, re we reduce the cost of finance. Out of 55 countries, 54 have signed the agreement, while 28 countries have ratified it as the continent looks forward to the takeoff of the agreement in 2021. In Abuja, Chimubi Walter Naji, NT News. This is NT8 Network News. Time to go on a break. Do stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Similar to what is going on in developed societies, how Nigeria harnesses and deploys technology and innovation to address emerging challenges will be crucial to the country's recovery from the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo stated this at a virtual conference of the Center for Lion Gadgets and Technologies, University of Nigeria, Soka, on the theme, Technological Innovation for Holistic Sustainable Development speaking about the importance of technology and innovation in resolving society's numerous problems the vice president said the nation must creatively imagine and pioneer the way out noting that the future of the country will be decided in groups where young nigerians are actively thinking about how to deploy technology in creative ways for problem solving such innovative ideas vice president oshimba just said must be deployed in a manner that is inclusive and accessible to all Nigerians, including the poor and vulnerable. In the meantime, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaja says the executive arm of government is ready to support the youth to influence the outcome of the hate speech bill before the National Assembly in the interest of the people. This was while engaging the All Progressives Congress social media operators at a virtual meeting held at the party's National Secretariat, where he assures that the government will continue to expand and sustain youth-friendly policies that will add value to the society. Saligu Abdullahi reports. Nigeria, like other developing nations, has a variety of media technology through which information gets to the people. Apart from the conventional media like television, radio, digital media services are among others used in dissemination of information. This group of young Nigerians are social media influencers working for the All Progressives Congress. I think that it is possible. We have quite a few initiatives for small businesses. And I think that these kinds of uh, uh, media platforms are also small businesses and they can benefit. Which is why I think, you know, at least as far as this group is concerned, a centrally organized group can take the advantage or the benefit of some of these um, resources that may be available to encourage uh, the small businesses around the media. If, if there had been a sense that government had not done as much as it should have, the time to abandon the ship is not now. Because if you do so, 
you don't even know who will come and take over. This interface with the party's leadership is an opportunity to review performances and renew commitment. Now, in doing that, I don't think it is only fair for us to be doing elite reconciliation. What about the people who are actually the full soldiers that nobody sees them within the radar? And part of that critical constituency is the social media constituency. The social media has completely shrunk the wall and has in the process become a great weapon for eradicating ignorance and becoming a democratic ideal. APC Kiatika and Extraordinary National Convention Planning Committee has promised to sustain this gesture in the interest of the party in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. To politics, the September 19, 2020 Edo State Governorship election is over. The winner has been declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and APC says it's comfortable with the outcome. National Caretaker Committee Chairman of the APC, Mai Malabuni, stated the party's position in a press statement as compiled by Ruth Aguele. The Young Progressives Congress has joined President Muhammad Buhari to affirm its commitment to free and fair elections in order to strengthen the foundation for political and moral authority of the party. In a statement by the chairman APC Kiateka Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, May Malabuni says the party commends INEC, the security agencies, and all political parties that contested the election for the successful conduct of the election. As a governing party, the APC says it will take every necessary step to support the federal government to consolidate all the gains achieved. The chairman says the APC salutes their candidate in the election. Pastor Osage Iseyamo for his tenacity and leadership and also commends Edo state leaders, especially immediate past national chairman Comrade Adam Soshomale and all members in Edo state for demonstrating unwavering support for the party and its candidate in the election. In the face of all the challenges, the APC collectively remained faithful and worked tirelessly during the campaigns. He therefore appealed to all members of the party to be strengthened by the outcome of the election and unite to correct all the problems that worked against the party and its candidate in the just concluded election. Furthermore, the chairman specifically celebrates the Edo State 2020 Governorship Campaign Council, led by Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji of Kano State. The party acknowledges and appreciates the contributions of all members of the campaign council. As progressives and Democrats, he said, they are confident that all leaders and members of the party will celebrate the outcome of the election as free and fair, as acknowledged by President Muhammad Buhari. He therefore called on all party members to unite and move the nation's democracy forward, adding that they must put an end to the error when electoral contests become welfare. He therefore urged all candidates and all members of the APC to join in congratulating Mr. Godwin Obaseki and the PDP being declared winner of the election. He added that their attention must now shift to Ondo State and ensure that APC wins the October 10, 2020 election. The federal government has initiated moves that is targeted at turning Nigeria into a media and entertainment hub. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed disclosed this at the inauguration of a steering committee for commercialization of the Nigeria Film Corporation in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. Standing as a frontline film agency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it was established in 1979 by decree number 60 and currently a parastata under the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The enabling act under which the agency operates empowers it to lay a solid foundation for the development of a viable and sustainable film industry and cinema culture in the country. With the move to make it viable, the Information and Culture Minister, who is chairing the steering committee, said the idea to commercialize the Nigerian Film Corporation wouldn't have come at a better time than now, understanding the contribution of Nollywood to the nation's economy, despite it being private sector driven. There's no case saying that the industry, the film industry, is the second largest employer of labor, according to the IMF. Now, back to the IMF, in 2015, it contributed about 8 
93 billion naira to the GDP. I think this underscores the importance of what we are doing today. With Nigeria's population advantage, the minister said it would be applauded if state governments join in putting in place infrastructure that will help the creative industry to thrive. I don't think it will be too much for the state governments to ensure they build at least one cinema houses in each local government area of their states. That will give us an additional 774 cinema houses. In India, 14 million people attend cinema every day. And you can imagine the sheer number, the impact it will have in the economy. On his part, the Director General of the Bureau of Public Enterprise, Alex Oku, made it clear that the reform is not in any way to privatize the agency. It's important to make that distinction because in a commercialization reform process, there is no transfer of ownership, there is no sale of shares, there is no privatization of the entity. Uh, it is basically to ensure that the resident value in such an enterprise is actually enhanced and practices such that will ensure the commercial viability of that particular enterprise are brought to, to play. Already, Alex Oko said a project inauguration team which was put in place has commenced work. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Let's talk security now, as Nigerian Air Force has so far recorded more than 85% serviceability on all its operational platforms. This was disclosed by the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, at the Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology in Kaduna. Abdullahi Mohammed was there. Utilizing one of its premier institutions, the Nigeria Air Force has continued to produce skilled officers and men meeting its maintenance needs and saving national resources. When the chief of the air staff showed up at the Nigeria Air Force Institute of Technology, Kaduna, it was an opportunity to take stock. The air chief says 760 of his officers and men have within this year received various kinds of training, despite limitations posed by the advent of COVID-19. Uh, what we require to be effective is a serviceable platform. You cannot get a serviceable platform if you don't have technicians that are properly trained. And we are also anticipating that this same set of people will support us by the time the Super Tucanos are in Nigeria or by the time other platforms that we are expecting come into Nigeria. We already have trained personnel. Before stepping out of the institute, the Air Chief inaugurated 48 rooms additional student accommodation for the institute in Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NTN News. <laughs> The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has appealed to state governments to ramp up testing for COVID-19 with a warning that community transmission of the virus is still raging. PTF Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation of Mustafa at Monday's briefing in Abuja says insufficient testing and reporting of COVID-19 cases by state is worrisome. But Tara Ibn tells us more. The PTF indicated at this briefing that the declining number of COVID-19 cases in the country is a direct outcome of the declining number of tests being conducted, which has dropped from 40,000 per week in June to 20,000 per week currently. So you can see that we're under testing. There's no doubt about it. If only 12 states are reporting, we will continue to appeal to the subnationals because it is their primary responsibility to provide for the welfare and the care for their people. We've done everything that we need to do from the federal level. The president has graciously approved for 32 states, or 34 states, you can say, 1 billion naira each, in the federal budget to help with their response to COVID-19. So I don't think any state can complain about lack of logistics now. We are not yet out of the woods. 
This country is still threatened and uh, we need to be able to know our status by doing nursery testing. In fact, with schools opening, uh, airports opening, we have to increase our level of attention because inevitably there will be more transmission as schools open because you bring people together. We said um, NYC should, should prepare to open up um, their orientation camps. Um, I'm sure they are already working on this night and day. Um, one of the things we, we plan to do with NYC is to uh, push up testing. Uh, we will be looking at testing within the orientation camps. I'm not aware that they have fixed a date yet for opening the camps, but we look forward to it and we'll work with them closely to test as many corpus as we can. For the PTF, this is a time to test, detect, isolate and treat more cases of COVID-19 with the gradual relaxation of restrictions. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikwen, NTA News. The entire world is expected to be devoted to 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire by strengthening ideals of peace on the 21st of September every year, declared as the International Day of Peace by the United Nations. Adebola Bruskele Sunday reports that the United Nations is also calling on every individual to be involved to fight coronavirus that has thrown the entire world into turmoil. This is the new Kuchigoro self-established displaced persons camp, home to about 2,000 people displaced in the northeast region of Nigeria as a result of insurgency occasioned by the activities of the Boko Haram. After about 10 years of conflict, the camp has become home to this lucky set of people who fled to the nation's capital. I choose peace instead of violence, 100% of my choice, and I want to, to return home. Uh, government is doing enough. We are appreciating his effort towards fighting this Boko Haram. Their offsprings know no other home but this camp where they are being taught in this makeshift classroom. Nigeria is not the only country with this challenge. The International Day of Peace was set aside in 1981 by the United Nations General Assembly, designated as a period of non-violence and ceasefire. We need to build non-violent uh, peace, you know, that is inclusive of everybody, that takes the yearnings as aspirations of all the parties together, so that we can have a country that is united, cohesive, and resilient, you know, against any form of odds that we'll face. Peace For the United given. Nations, it is now clearer than ever before that the common enemy of mankind is the ravaging coronavirus, which threatens health, security, and people's way of life. We need to silence the guns and focus on our common enemy, the virus. During the day and beyond, the United Nations expects all nations and people to honor cessation of hostilities and commemorate the day through education by shaping peace together. How to stop the proliferation of arms that has been a major challenge is also the focus of discourse of this forum put together by the West Africa Action Network on Small Arms. The dialogue should identify ways to further amplify women's contribution to the community as well as peace and security. It was also an opportunity for the group to launch a gender and domestic violence awareness calendar with a red card to rape and rapists. The Nigerian Television Authority remains committed and it will continue to expose and to fight this crime. Adios. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Michael Olaleya in Lagos takes us through the next set of reports. Thank you, Kene. A real-time point of care testing instrument for SARS-CoV-2 infections with the use of molecular technique to detect the virus causing COVID-19 has been unveiled in Lagos. SARS-CoV-2 isothermal molecular assay adjudged to be the most reliable was developed by the Nigerian Institute for Medical Research. Joy Ken Abakwea has details. As the world awaits the discovery of a vaccine for the prevention of COVID-19, case detection remains a major aspect in the control of the spread of the virus, with very limited number of testing centers and the demanding methods currently being used. 
developing a fast multiplex real-time test isothermal molecular assay for SARS-CoV-2 therefore becomes necessary. The instrument, according to the Nigerian Institute for Medical Research, which has been evaluated in three laboratories, is guaranteed to detect up to 100 RNA copies in less than 40 minutes. We hope to improve on it, uh, to improve the, the detection limits. We believe it can be used by tertiary hospitals uh, so that all tertiary hospitals in country can have it. That will expand and upscale the opportunity for testing COVID-19 in Nigeria. Low-skilled personnel, NIMA says, can be trained to diagnose COVID-19 in health centers using the instrument. The difference between PCR and this is that PCR actually goes through different cycles of temperature. It can go 95, come down to 90, 52, and go back. It takes a lot of temperature, a lot of power, heating up and cooling. This works at one temperature or two. 80 to 90 percent materials used for the production of the kits, Naima says, were locally sourced. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakpoya, NTN News. Now to security. The Zone 2 Police Command has paraded seven criminal suspects involved in conspiracy, kidnapping, murder, false pretense, and stealing. Assistant Inspector General of Police Zone 2 Command Ahmed Iliasu stated that the suspects were arrested due to the relentless efforts of the command's officers. Imoli Ayotokede has details. These young men, who are between the ages of 25 and 38, were arrested for three different cases of kidnapping and killings in the southwest zone of the country. They were accused of kidnapping a serving female police inspector around Ayetoro area in Ogun State, and in the process, killed a driver in another vehicle who tried to escape. Usually, they keep their victims in the forest, the adjoining forest of these areas in Igua. Aetori area and some areas towards Sapadi Odumakin along Ibadan, Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Also recovered from the suspects were four Siena Space buses, a Toyota SUV Jeep, bunch of keys of story buildings and documents of landed properties. The AIG says the police will continue to review strategies towards checkmating criminal activities for the protection of lives and property. In Lagos, in Moliayo Tukidi, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports with Kene shortly. Thank you for joining us. The Nigerian Association of Rail Transport Owners, Naturi, stood down tools for two days in protest of what they call sudden ban on petroleum trucks above 45,000 liters capacity from plying Nigerian roads. NATO President Yusuf Lawal Othman says the decision taken without engaging its members is considered counterproductive for business at a critical time that COVID-19 is hitting the sector hard. Lydia Samson reports. NATO is the umbrella body of commercial vehicle owners engaged in the haulage of petroleum products, general cargoes and movement of goods and passengers within the country and West African region. NATO president says, following incessant vandalism of pipelines, his members, in response to the socio-economic challenge, would appeal from government invested in trucks to salvage the nation from the dense scarcity of petroleum products. None of the major transport companies across the country can continue any form of operation with this policy within the shortest time frame. In view of the above, we are therefore constrained to allow the decision of all our members to pack their trucks as from tomorrow, 22nd to 23rd September 2020, prevail as warning. And furthermore, issue 10 days ultimatum with effect from 24th September 2020 for a full-blown withdrawal of service. NATO said it is shocking to its members that without dialogue they are given directive to keep off roads with loads above certain capacity. They allege that it may cripple not just their business but also indirectly add to unemployment a force to lay off drivers. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News.
Now, in a move that will have a significant positive impact on agricultural productivity and assured income for farmers at this challenging time, the Nigerian incentive-based risk-sharing system for agricultural lending, NASL, in collaboration with Royal Exchange General Insurance Company, have developed the hybrid multi-parallel crop indemnity index insurance for crop farmers. The new product, launched at Nassau's head office in Abuja, is an outcome of Nassau's long-standing commitment to the development of innovative agricultural insurance products and expanding coverage for agricultural lending across the entire agricultural value chain. Leah Katung, Babatunde, completes the story. The natural occurrences that inflict losses on farmers flawed stands out in recent time, leaving in its wake massive disaster in hundreds of hectares across the country. The development of HMWI is in accordance with NISAL's mandate to the risk agriculture and increase insurance cover for up to 3.6 million farmers nationwide by 2026. NISAL's managing director, Aliu Abdul Hamid, say HMWI is another step towards the development of the NISAL Comprehensive Index Insurance conceptualized in 2018. And the good thing is that uh, thanks to the Central Bank of Nigeria, which owns NISAL, we have coverage and footprint in all the 36 states plus Abuja, and we cover the entire 774 local government with sufficient logistics and staff coverage. We look forward to working with you on this multi parallel uh, crop indemnity, and uh, I, I wish that uh, you know everybody contributes uh, his, his own quota to ensuring that this is successful. It will give farmers cover from losses during a planting season caused by bad weather, pests, disease outbreak, fire, as well as permanent disability or death of the farmer. The small scale farmers and the, those farmers that are living on sustenance cannot be able to you package insurance with the level of the credit or the facility that is given to them. The importance the government of the, of the day places on agreeing is something that nobody should toy with. NISAL has been able to crowd in private insurance companies into the agri-insurance space through the formation of a consortium of four insurance companies in 2017, which is now going to 10 insurance companies, including Reddick. In Abuja, Leah Katumbaba, NTA News. Another commercial break beckons on the